Okay, moving averages are actually a very easy thing to do, particularly the odd ones. So this is for 4C in your textbook. Um, moving averages, odd number of points. We're going to do a three point moving average and we're going to do that in black and then we'll do a couple of others in different colours. To do this, what I do is I would draw another line underneath my table and we'll just call it three point and I'll drop all of those down like so. Now all you do is you grab these three points here and that goes into that. So you average them and that goes into that box. Then you will grab these three points and that goes into that one. And then these three points and that goes into that one. So if we do it, so I'll do some calculations here. Remember to find the average, you add your points together and divide by how many they are. So we're doing a three point moving average. So we're going to add 57 plus 36 plus 22 and we're going to divide that by three because there are three points. Now I'll calculate that and I'll be back in just a second. So that comes out at 12.78. So that will go in that column there. So if we do the next one, just for an example, and I'll fill in the rest and show you what it does to the actual time series. So the next one is 36 plus 22 plus 49. And again, we're dividing by three. So I'll calculate that and I'll be back. So that equals 35.67. So that's going to go in there. So I can then go through and work out the rest of them and that you're going to lose this point here and you'll lose that point there. So they won't show up on your time series when you replot your medians, your moving average smooth ones, sorry. So if I go through and calculate the rest of these and then I'll be back. Okay, so there we are back now. So if I plot these on a graph, it will come back and you will see that the original time series will look something like this whereas my three-point moving average one hopefully will look a little bit flatter than that. It might still vary a little bit, and it probably will still vary a little bit, but it will... Oh, you can't even see what I'm drawing, sorry. So this, this squiggly line would be my original, and I'll show this on the calculator in a second. I'll just give you a bit of background now. This will be my original time series, and this one here would be my three-point moving average series. So it changes, it, it tr the whole idea here is to remove some of the variation of, of this trend. Um, so I'll get all that sorted on the calculator and then I'll be back. Original time series and I've put everything into the into the um, list and spreadsheet page so that we're ready to go. So the next step is to try and graph the other one on top. To do that is actually not as hard as you may think. You can actually graph one on top of the other. So to do that we can add a Y variable. So we go menu and we go down to plot properties number two and we add a Y variable. And so we want to add uh, it'll be, oh, average, there it is right at the top. So I remember what I called it. So there's average and you can see that it's added that to my plot. So my original one, sorry about that, my original one is the squares and it does this. So it goes up and down quite a lot. Okay, my new one has a lot gentler slope up and down. It still it still varies, but it is a lot, a lot gentler, I should say. So we're going to go back and we're now going to do a five point moving average on that. Okay, so here we are back again. This time we're going to do a five point moving average, which means I'm going to take the first one, two, three, four, five points and that will go into this one and then we will take the second five points and that will go into that one. So the whole process is the same, but instead of taking just three points, you take five, and this will mean you will lose two points on either end of your data. So they won't have values. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to show you how to calculate that. I've already shown you that. I will calculate them and then I will come back to you. Okay, so there we are with the five point moving average filled out in the blue here. So I've calculated all of them, I've also put them into my table. So if I bring my calculator back over and we'll zoom in on that, you can see that I've put them in the, the spreadsheet there under AVG. So I'm going to head back over to my plot and I can add another Y variable and we can plot the five point at the same time as the three point as well as our original data. So to do that we go menu plot properties, add a, y add a y variable, 
and this time we're going to do AVG and that will then plot that and that's the triangles and you can see that the triangles vary very little and we're also missing quite a few data points so the the bigger moving average um, system we use the more data points we lose so you need to be very careful about choosing the how many point moving average you're going to do so that's pretty much the odd point um, average smoothing all you need to do the easiest way I find to do it is to use a table like that all right and if you need to draw your lines so that you know where you're pulling things from so that you know that you're pulling from these these five points here for this one here if that's easier then do it like that working it out simply on the calculator is not as simple as working it out by hand in my opinion graphing it on the calculator is fine as, as I've shown you you can see them the original the three point and the five point moving averages can all be graphed at the same time but actually calculating your three point moving average and things like that I think is much easier done in a table as shown there Good luck guys, we'll come back with an even point moving average in the next video.